It's time to get smart about keeping track of fevers. Playing around with a smart patch thermometer, Fever Smart. Welcome everyone, a product review from Spike Studio. This time we're looking at Fever Smart. This is a new way, new technology of you keeping track of the thermometer usage for you know siblings or uh, older adults or anyone that you need to keep track of how their health is. It's pretty cool. Uh, it uses some Bluetooth technology, some wireless technology possible, continuous monitoring. We'll talk about all that stuff. Let's look at the packaging and we'll look at how it works. We've got a few devices down here we're gonna work with. Inside what we'll find, some pretty smart looking packaging. There's a battery, there's a little clear thing, not sure what that is yet, the actual device itself and a magic box, which we'll talk about in a minute. So we're gonna open it up and it lets you know that the actual user guide is at the bottom of all this. So we're gonna pop out this plastic piece that's in there and then look at the pieces. One of the reasons I popped this out is they did a good job of packaging and the actual device sits pretty darn snug <laughs> inside of it. The user guide itself, I complain a lot about tiny little user guides and they're hard to read and they're real tiny. This one, not so much. They did a pretty good job, even has some diagrams as well that you can see on here. We'll look at those. Here's what you'll find. The device is pretty small. That's it, it's the whole device. What we have is a thermometer, actual temperature gauge, I would say, not thermometer, but a temperature gauge. There is a power button on the back, and then there is a lock mechanism for locked and unlocked. Now, one thing about this, and you'll see, it took me a couple times, you'll see a little bit of stretching on it or stuff. It's a soft plastic. Um, using a screwdriver coin kind of dented the uh, plastic a little bit that's around there. Another thing, it comes with the battery inside the case, it also comes with a piece of plastic you need to pull. It's a little orange tab that you pull out to get usage ready. It's not clear which way you put the battery in. I don't think even the instructions had it if it did. I didn't see it anywhere. It just says put the battery in. It says plus side up. So it's in the picture on the third one it says insert battery. What was confusing is I didn't look at which way at first. I looked inside the case. Inside the case, it has a negative symbol and a positive symbol. I was looking, well, if it's negative and positive symbols inside both ways, which way do I put it? Third one shows positive side up, put on the case, give it a click. Now, one of the things it does state, and I had to email them because I didn't see it right away, it says the LED light will glow. Well, there's nowhere that you would see the LED light. Here was my problem. The studio lighting is so bright most of the time, it's actually underneath the plastic right there. So this faint blue light was going off. In the dark, it was magnificent. When the battery's in right, it's even better too. But it's so faint under the plastic. I wish they would have exposed that somehow. Um, a little dot, a clear spot, something in the actual casing to let you know. What you're supposed to do for the first time setups and syncing is actually hold this down for a couple seconds, get it turned on. Here's another difference. I downloaded the app on both Android and on iOS. They have a link, a URL link that you can go to on their page, which gave a weird 404 error the first time. And then uh, I went to their actual main page, found the link. So they've moved it from what they had in the guide to the page they actually specify for you to download. One other major difference between the two was inside the iOS, it says it's from Fever Smart in the manufacturer. Inside of Android, it has a guy named William's name. He's probably the developer of the app. I imagine they're going to change that. Another major difference, when launching the app on iOS, I got prompted for a wizard to walk me through a lot. Android said, just click here and here in terms of how the screen works, but it never walked me through a wizard of doing the setup. I hear from them directly in email, they're going to be updating their app shortly. So hopefully by the time you see this video, the apps will be updated. So let's go ahead and jump in and look at it. The app icon itself is way down here on the bottom, Fever Smart. So you're going to be looking for that green thing there. We're going to launch that right now. So right now it's at the welcome screen. It says, turn on the Fever Smart by holding down the power button. What you need to have and understand is it uses Bluetooth technology to talk to the device. If Bluetooth is not on your phone or your tablet, it's not gonna work. They have two modes you can operate in. You can operate as the actual unit that receives the data or as a relay. Okay, here's what I like and don't like about this part of it. That means that no matter what, I need to have a phone or device or tablet within X amount of feet of the person that's being monitored with this to actually receive the data. That can then upload to the cloud or it can relay it to something else. I wish this had some sort of wireless capability that when it was on, it could transmit. That would eat battery a lot faster. I totally understand that. But having a device that's near them on all the time is also something you need to think about, meaning your device will probably have to be plugged in and make sure it doesn't go into some sleep mode that turns off all the signals. Some of them do that. So keep that in mind also that there's some things like when you're playing a song, it stays on, but when you're just turning off the device or goes into a sleep mode, it turns off the Bluetooth. So keep that in mind. Now I'm gonna turn this on again by holding it down for two seconds and then see if I can pick it up 
on here. Turn on the Fever Smart device by holding down the power button. The idea is now on the tablet to have it synchronized so I can pick it up and assign it to my application. I've already created a profile, which was strictly a username and a password. And the username was your email address. So keep that in mind as is email address and password. You enter it twice and you're done. Uh, I, there's no other way that I saw that you set up an account. I'm not going to link it to Facebook or anything. That's all I needed to do to enter it. So I'm holding this down. I see the blue light blinking. There it goes. You can barely see it in the corner. So I'm holding it down. I now see a unique number of 4012 and it has a bunch of numbers. So I'm going to select that. Please enter a name for this sensor. Well, of course I'm going to enter a name for this sensor. I'm adding it. I've now added the sensor to my profile, which is a cool part. It says easy monitor temperature by creating a profile for each Fever Smart user. I'm adding users. Now what they give you on the screen as this is working is a great idea of what you need to do. Swipe, got it, okay, left. You can add to tap to assign the sensor, adjust the settings. We'll talk about those. So got it. It says add child. I really wish this screen said add a person because maybe it's an adult that I need to monitor their temperature. There is a lot of that going on as home health care needs and you know keeping track of the elderly. I would just prefer it said add a person and not necessarily going to be a child. It could be the spouse. Maybe she's sick and you want to add them. So add a profile pic. When you click it, it says take a photo or use existing. It grabs the photo. I say use photo. Now my profile has a photo assigned to it. Now enter a name. Well, that's me. Done. It says alert settings. Now the alert settings, it says save first and then set the alert settings. Well, let me, okay, let's talk about the UI. The alerts, the alert settings button is here and then save. I'd put save and then alert settings below that. Why would I put, watch, if I say alert settings, please save first. Well, why don't you just put the save button there and then, never mind. Save. Now we're going to do the actual alert settings in just a second. It says relay mode, start relay mode. Now it's going to have an actual, another tutorial on the screen. See the graph, see the current temperature. I got it. So now it's searching. First of all, I want to go into Chris, which is me, and set my alert settings. And you can actually do other things like set it to Fahrenheit or Celsius and export the temperatures or switch the modes. I should be able to set a high and a low temperature. So the first part I'm going to be able to set in just a second is, you know, if it goes above X degrees. So if it goes above 100, I want you to let me know. If it goes below 97, let me know if the person gets too chilly or something like that. So we're going to go back. We're going to select Chris. We're going to select the device. And then we're going to get it working. Now let's talk about the box while I select that. The box you'll need because we're going to use the device with the box. What's in the box? There is 10 included sticky pads. These sticky pads go over the device and hold it where you place it. Guess what? It goes under the arm. The idea is it checks the ambient temperature or the temperature of the outside of the skin. Unlike when you put under your tongue. So it's normally, what is it they said, like a half a degree off or something like that of what the child's temperature or person's temperature will be instead of being under the tongue. Uh, this is common to the ones they rub across the forehead or whatever. It's the actual outside of the body temperature, which still heats up. Keeping under the arm shows the body heat. So basically you put the patch on, you put it under the arm, and as the child sleeps or lays down or whatever, it just keeps track of the temperature for you. Make sure you put the sensor part towards the skin, meaning the main part of the body. Don't put it on the exposed part because that wouldn't make any sense, now would it? <laughs> at all actually now one thing i haven't found is where in here i actually set what wi-fi for this to connect to as the relay so i'm going to look at that in just a minute you can actually switch modes as well i've got the actual setting screen up you see you can switch modes so we've got that in here too and you can add other users i should did mention that you can add other users down at the bottom so i'm going to select chris i'm going to select the device it's in relay mode it's got my account, log entry every 15 minutes. Offset temperature means that I can go in and set a temperature offset amount for it to know. Meaning, you know, you know they're going to be 10 degrees cooler or 15 degrees cooler, whatever it is. So we're going to say, okay, we're not going to deal with that. We're going to leave it at zero. And I can switch the mode if I want to. Do you want to sync the device's local storage? Well, I don't want it to be in the local storage unless I need to leave this device next to them and there was no Wi-Fi present. I would prefer, of course, to send it to the cloud. So no, I don't want to change it. I want this to be a client. So now we've run this for a while. I'll put up a sample graph. I mean, mine was pretty consistent. They have graphs on their website that show you how it actually looks and when it runs. Uh, ran this in the actual mode of collecting the data locally on the device. Gives a nice picture for you as well. One issue with the device that I had, may have just been my device, not really sure, but I noticed that every so often it would lose the contact of where the battery was. Inside is a very thin piece of metal that pushes up on the battery. And unless I had pressure on it, I couldn't get the thing to work half the time. Uh, it may have just been this device. It may I don't know what the deal was with it, but I do notice that that's the problem it had. Otherwise, when it was functioning, it functioned fantastically. Uh, getting the battery in and out, 
you need a screwdriver for, like I said, um, a coin of some kind to get the battery out because of the way it sits in here. Sorry for the, <laughs> the loud noise, but you can see this little bitty tiny thin metal strip that's in here. It doesn't sit very high. Let me get you an angle right there. It doesn't sit very high off the base. So I don't know. I've had this problem in another device that I wear all the time. I'm not going to say who, and it actually had the same type of issue. And I know we talked about the screwdriver and the thing in the back, that little plastic piece that was in there has a little ledge on it that fits perfectly in the back of the Fever Smart, which is what you should probably use <laughs> to open and close the battery case. It it doesn't say that really very, it, it just, it, it fits in the little slot. It's like a giant coin of sorts. It's still a little shallow. Uh, I don't know, there's something they could, I did something to do with it. I just want to let you know that that's what this thing is for. What I did do is I went in and bent it up a little bit to see if I could get it to work a little better, gave it a little more pressure, a little more arch, and kind of had the same result no matter what I did with it. Yeah, same thing, it came and went. So I'm not sure if the battery was going dead and there's no way to really know if the battery was going dead or not. I looked in the guide and it just says change the battery. Device set power on, low or no battery power. But I would hope that the battery would actually give me some sort of signal on here as well to let me know that it was doing it. Um, what else can I tell you about it? Overall, it's a really cool technology, a really good idea. You have to get some more patches eventually. They give you 10 to start with. You could use some other types if someone was allergic to this type. I'm not sure where you actually find them, to be honest with you, but you could get them. And you know, these are the Fever Smart packaged ones that come with it. Uh, the graphing was cool. I love the technology. I like the idea. One other thing it didn't tell me is right now, I actually have the battery out of the device, but the screen isn't telling me that it's disconnected. It says that I'm still connected or it's gonna pull. I'm not seeing that I'm actually disconnected from it. So overall, I think it's pretty cool technology. I think their updates are gonna add a lot to the UI and help you with the usability factor. Uh, I love the way that it keeps track and lets you remotely monitor. I wish it had a little more capability in the device, but I understand battery usage is a big problem with that. So to that, I say thank you very much. It's another product review from Spike Studio, and if we get an update from this, we will add it to the blog post as well as the comments in the video. Thanks for watching.